We are here today um, with our Biz Advocacy in Action podcast, and we have our other co-host that you'll be seeing every other month with me, and that is William Morgan, who is our Vice Chair for Advocacy at the Chamber. So welcome, William. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, so glad, to, excited to talk about all the legislative things that we're going to be getting up to this year, and um, and glad you're part of that, and and going to kind of take us to that next level. So sure. thank you so much. Do you want to tell everybody about our business advocacy and kind of what our purpose is? Sure. Well, you know, it's it's very important, and, and we feel that, that we and you at the chamber, uh, to keep not only the chamber members and the businesses uh, up to date as to what's going on legislatively, both local, mm -hmm. state level, and even federally, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, also let our local and state and federal leaders know what it is that our members would like to see right. and what impacts us here. So this is it's kind of a work in progress. Uh, this is a very fluid conversation that we have with with all of the electeds um, to, to let them know exactly what it is that the business community would like to see here in Statesville. That's right. That's right. And we just... Um, our board approved our 2023 legislative agenda just last month. So I don't know if you want to hit some of those highlights to kind of give people an idea of what we are looking at and what, what are some of the things we're following. Sure. Um, essentially, it's broken down into, into four different categories, economic development, infrastructure, education, and innovation. That's kind of the catch-all. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as economic development, we all know that uh, the growth is uh, is good, mm -hmm. and um, we're, we're wanting to support tax policy and advocating supporting tax policy say that encourages growth, mm -hmm. investment, and job creation. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, Arlo County has an exceptionally low tax rate. Yes. Uh, on one hand, that's beneficial. On the other hand, that means that you're kind <laughs> of limited right. in terms of growth. And of course, we've just gone through the revaluation. Yes. A lot of people got their revaluation yes. notices, yes. and there's a lot of discussion there. So there's there's some questions as to how that's going to shake out. I just learned at our last board meeting that we're the fourth largest um, in economic development in the state. Uh, or, or, or what was that stat? Do you remember? That, that's um, in terms of average wage. Average wage. That's average a, wage. Yeah, fourth. fourth. I thought that was kind of a crazy stat. And, that, and of course, that, you know, Ardell County is a very long county. Yes. And a lot of that uh, can be attributed yeah. to what's south of 40. That's true. Um, but we certainly help up right. north of 40 that's right. as well. Um, we also want to support development related to affordable and workforce housing. And mm -hmm. why is that important? Well, mm -hmm. as you said, we're recruiting a lot of industry here. It's about time. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen this, the southern sprawl come our way, um, and our economic development folks have done a fantastic job, mm -hmm. um, both here locally and at the state level at the Economic Development mm -hmm. Partnership, um, attracting business and, and it's landing here in our community. But with that and with all the jobs that are being created, people have to have a place to live. That's right. Um, and affordable housing doesn't mean what it used to mean. Yeah. Uh, it's, an, it's an astronomical number. I, yeah. I think the average home in Iredell County that was sold was around $180,000 yeah. over the last 12 months. So um, mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing when mortgage rates are at 3%, when they're at 6%, that, that can create that's another right. problem. So mm -hmm. we need affordable and workforce housing. It's not just a statesville problem, not just a North Carolina problem. It's a problem everywhere. It definitely is, yes. Um, and then uh, we want to see the, the revitalization of certain areas of town, specifically starting with South Statesville. Mm -hmm. That is a gateway. Um, is, you yeah. know, we've, we've got... Um, coming up north from 77, you've got different exits there. We have the Larkin Industrial Development at exit 45, coming up Amity Hill Road. That's going to be a gateway into the city. Yes. Um, if you look at where the housing development is, right that's there. on the south side yep. of Statesville. Somebody that lives over there, <laughs> and yes, so busting at the seams already. All right. <laughs> without, que without question. Yep. Um, so we would like to see the revitalization mm -hmm. of South Statesville. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as infrastructure, and we want to advocate for an infrastructure system like uh, greenways, parks, yes. um, utilities and roads, some things that we can control here, some things that we're out of our control. Right. Um, but all of that goes to generate economic growth and help support economic growth. Um, when industry is looking to move into an area, um, more and more quality of life is becoming more important. And uh, we want to make sure that we have the resources available to, to those industries. That's right. um, strategic transportation investments that prioritize transportation funding, um, people have to get to work. Right. Um, people have to get to the grocery store. People have to get to the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so supporting a transit system. Mm -hmm. We have um, the Outer County Transit System, ICATS, um, but supporting that is, is going to be key. Um, the arts, travel, tourism, you know, again, it goes back to the quality of life. Uh, and then support policies that promote private sector investments in, uh, in things like broadband. People have to have access to the Internet. Yeah. Otherwise, they couldn't see this. And I think we really saw that during COVID, when, especially when the schools went to a, um, you know, went to the... 
the Zoom format, you know, they went remote and we saw the disparities in some of our community that didn't have good a- good access to Wi-Fi. And Absolutely. The schools had to get creative. The communities had to get creative. Um, so that's a really big one. Children shouldn't have to and parents shouldn't have to go to McDonald's and park in a parking right. lot to be able to access Wi-Fi right. for their kids to that's do right. their homework. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got some very good support in the legislature mm-hmm. for broadband technology. Uh, and again, what happens in Washington trickles down to Raleigh, trickles down to the communities. Right. Um, so we've got to let all of the electeds know how important that is. As far as education, um, innovation and resourcing the education system, uh, supporting a very flexible school calendar uh, for school districts across the state to allow the individual school districts to build a calendar that fits their system. Uh, again, that's difficult. You've got rules and regulations that you have to follow, but but there is some give and take and some leeway there. Um, local and state funding of the public school system as it relates to things like capital projects and growth uh, with industry and people and moving in. And we're hearing that right <clears throat> now with, with our school project that there that you know when we i guess when the bond was passed it was a lot cheaper to build it and when the costs went up now we're they're it's, trying to figure out how to pay for it and now. that's that's happening that's, everywhere mm-hmm. <clears throat> but again it's still uh, it's still important yes um mental health of students i uh, increasing the counselors mm-hmm. nurses social workers um the the students can't learn if if there's something bothering them i don't know if you saw but the they just um the last school board meeting they pat they were given a they applied for a grant and received it for a mental health grant and yes. the board mm-hmm. accepted that so that's right up right up the alley there of, of one of our legislative items i was really glad to see that that went through absolutely and then and then something that's very important is the career and technical education mm-hmm. to build a vibrant workforce absolutely. um you know it, not everybody needs to go to a four-year institution mm-hmm. Um, and we need more and more people doing that type of work. And again, especially as industry comes yeah. in. You know, at our annual meeting, our, our presenting, our speaker, he um, said like the statistic was like the average age of people that do plumbing, HVAC, those type of jobs are is about 70 years old. Right. And there's, we don't, we don't have enough people coming behind them. So that is, CATS does a great job with some of that work, auto automotive and some other culinary and other things, but not, you know, that's, we got to start paying attention to that, to that space because those folks are going to retire out and we're going to be paying a lot of money. <laughs> it's interesting you're saying that because we have a chamber member yes. who uh, is in a technical profession mm-hmm. uh, and wants to retire, but <laughs> but can't because they can't find anybody to apprentice That's a session, and, yeah. and then to eventually turn the business over. So they're, they're either going to have to just quit cold turkey, which they don't want to do. They have a very established business. Yeah. So that's going to become very, Maybe very Maybe we need important. to talk about that in our education workforce meeting. A, a question. Yeah, that's it's a good idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally, innovation, kind of a catch-all, um, supporting efforts to ensure healthcare accessibility and affordability for individuals, um, encouraging developing homegrown talent. You know, when uh, when I graduated, I grew up here, yeah. and when I graduated from high school and then went off to school, I didn't go too far, but I went off to school. Uh, the whole uh, thought process was, well, you know, I'm leaving Statesville, I'm not coming right. back. And probably half of our graduating class yeah. is still living here. When you ask our youth leadership who are like the top 25% of their of their junior class, they all say that when we interview them, they all say, you know, we always ask, do you have plans to come back? And there are a lot of them are like, uh, probably not. Right. So just wait, which is why youth leadership is so powerful because it, teaches them and shows them what is available in their community and hopefully will change some minds. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and then and then finally, opposing unnecessary regulations that increase cost, reduce consumer choice, hamper innovation, mm-hmm. limit technology, and, and that's everywhere. I yeah. mean, that's um, certainly in the business community, that's in the, the planning community with city and states and with Iredell County, mm-hmm. making it easier for industries to, to come in and, right. and streamline the process. So I think everything on here is nothing that is surprising to anybody. I think these are all things that not only Statesville, like you said, hand, has a problem with or has issue or has to, to, to watch, but all the way up to the whole country. No I mean, question. These are, these are all very um very common issues that communities face. And so we're, so part of us, part of this committee, this advocacy committee is to make sure we stay on top of those issues. And when things pop up, we reach out to our elected officials and say, hey, we saw this was coming up. You know, this is the chamber stance on that. So we're excited sure. to have you at the helm of that. So um, we're also doing our first advocacy program. That's right. Up, March That's right. 13th. That's right. And we're going to have the city of Statesville um, kind of doing a state of the city kind of thing. You know, we're going to have a panel with city manager, the mayor, and hopefully the planning department just to kind of talk about what's happening in Statesville because it's, right. it's a lot. They had their um, their uh, 
council meeting this Monday night had another big, you know, incentive announcement that they're doing. So there's right. a it's a lot going on in, oh, in yeah. the community. So I look forward to hearing from them. March thirteenth, we'll send out some information about the where and the what and all all the details. You should see that in the next couple next week or so. Absolutely. And we, we need to warn them that it's a two way street. Yes. That they're gonna hear from us as to what that's right. we would like to see as so well. That's so that's that's right. So don't don't think you're just coming to listen. We want this to be an, an right. interactive conversation with our city um and this is a great opportunity to do that in a um in a neutral environment i guess and they'll come if we feed them that's right there'll be some food some lunch so um that's really all we have we just wanted to sort of give you a sort of a snippet of what you can expect every other month when william comes out we'll have some guests maybe we'll talk about different topics but if you want to get involved in our business advocacy committee, just let us know. The agenda is on our website under our advocacy tab, and you can see what's where what's going on there. But if you're interested in in sitting on that committee, we the committee kind of gets together once a year to go over the legislative agenda, and then um, we might meet once or twice to do some other things. But it's sort of a task force um, or committee. But William and I and whoever else would like to join us in planning these. Um, the next few um, programs let us know absolutely all right sure well thanks thank you all right